Good morning, everyone. Lots of hands waving. Great to um, see you all this morning. Um, welcome to the, um, the webinar today, um, Writing a Successful Grant Application. I'll introduce our presenter in a moment. Um, but before I do, I've got a few formalities to run through. Firstly, I'd like to acknowledge the, the traditional owners of the various lands on which we work today and the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people participating in this meeting and webinar. I pay my respects to Elders past, present and emerging and recognise and celebrate the diversity of Aboriginal peoples and their ongoing cultural and connections to the land and waters of Australia. Today's webinar will be recorded and made available on the website. So please make use of it after today's session. We also have another a number of other sessions coming up to do with the co-investment fund um, and the Parks 2025 initiative that the Department of Environment and Water are moving forward on. In terms of meeting protocol today, please um, keep your microphones on mute. I very much encourage you to use the chat um, and please um, make comments and and make and ask questions on the chat as well and I'll ask um, our presenter to keep an eye on the chat and I may even come in um, during the presentation with different points that people are raising because if we can deal with questions and comments whilst um, Keith is presenting on different areas is probably a better way to to, um, to progress. So the session today, um, I'm delighted to present um, Keith Whelan, the grants guy. Um, I love your branding and I love your um, the way in which you present your business, Keith. Um, Keith presently works uh, works sourcing grants and funds for both public and private sector across Australia. He presently teaches grant writing, writing courses at University of Sydney, um, Canberra and Adelaide Uni and acts as a consultant for all levels of government in Australia. Keith, it's over to you. Thank you, Sean, and good morning to everyone. Welcome along to this morning's webinar. Great to have you along. Let's get your grant ready. Let's talk about this great grant that's out there, Nature Based Tourism Co-Investment Fund. Some of the do's and don'ts, what you should do when you step your way through this grant application, what's expected from you as an applicant, and certainly the work you need to undertake before you even put in the application and the work you're going to be expected to do during and after the application in terms of acquittal, auditing and evaluation as well. As Sean said, please feel free to use the chat room. I'll try and get through those questions as best I can today as well. And we'll probably have maybe a little bit of time at the end to open it up for questions as well at the end of the day. Okay, so we'll step through this. Obviously, as Sean said, this will be recorded. So go through it at your own discretion after the fact. Make sure you take the points on board. Everything that's available here will be through the recording so you can go back and nitpick through it at your own discretion. So let's kick things off. We have a $5 million nature-based tourism co-investment fund at the moment. And co-investment obviously is very integral in this process. And previously, the webinars have shown that. And go back and look at those previous webinars. They're great sources of information from the department and from TICSA. And look at what's available and what they're advocating. Co-investment oh, is very, very important. So you're going to have to put a co-contribution funding in here, basically. And it's there to support, have a stimulus, and support businesses need to activate or build existing ecologically sensitive tourism offerings across a wide variance. Okay, so state, national parks, reserves, botanic gardens, and crown land. The fund is open now and will be available in June 2022, so it's quite open for a period of time or until the fund's exhausted. You can seek grants between $20,000 and $1 million, but you're expected to contribute at least half of the total financial costs of the project. So be wary of that and be in a financial state to do that, obviously. It's not in kind, it's actually financial as well at the end of the day. So we can't quantify logistics, resources, personnel. We can as contributory costs, but not in terms of financial costs. So I do need to see the financial proportioning of a 50% contribution from your organization. The fund objectives, number one is conservation. So deliver positive benefits for the conservation of South Australia's nature, parks and places. Now what I've synopsized here 
in the slides that I'm presenting is, are focal points for me that I would address if I was to write this grant application. Not only from a tick the box per se, but understanding that these are the identifiables that need to be achieved. So what I'm advocating here is what you should be reflecting in your grant application as well. So number one is conservation. Number two is community. Deliver sustainable tourism services that benefit, keyword there, and support, keyword there, are supported by local community and visitors at the end of the day. And grants is about keywords, and I'll touch on that as we move forward as well, understanding that. The economy. Deliver a clear economic benefit. How is it translatable, basically, to the local visitor economy? It's a state-based visitor economy, and even potentially wider afield, because we're looking to create new sustainable jobs and economic growth out of what you're advocating, and that's why we're investing into your program, your endeavor, and what you're trying to achieve as a tourism entity in your respective area. So be mindful of these three, and for me, there will be subheadings for yourself when you're actually sitting down to draft your grant application. How am I ticking the box per se on conservation? community economy and then basically segueing into the guiding principles basically the base experiences that they're looking for which is compatibility with the natural and cultural values sustainable design and operation of facilities stakeholders and community benefit education and advocacy and conservation dividend again another abbreviated list that i'll be looking to go through ardently to make sure i've content to reflect that in my application so you're going to have to think about how, again, you can populate these, which means drafting in advance now. Now is the time optimally, certainly when you have that latitude of time when you can apply. Sit down and think about consolidating now about your business case and what you're putting forward. And then once you've done your business case, do your budget with your business case and make sure you are aligning to what's been expected of you here. As I said, not just from a tick the box, but in terms of value adding. All right. Grant funding is top-up funding, all right? There's an expectation that you as a business are already sourcing revenue from alternate revenue streams. Other grants, crowdfunding, sponsorship, fundraising, stakeholders, shareholders, loans, et cetera, et cetera. So they're going to see how they're providing value-add funding to this great endeavor that you're trying to achieve as a tourism entity that's going to create jobs, going to draw visitors into your area at the end of the day, and you align yourselves to what the guiding principles are in the grants. Be mindful of that, because inherently, in all the years I've acted as a consultant, people are still not answering the question in a grant application. And this is what I'm trying to guide you through. Very much baby step to answer the question you're asked, not the question you think you're asked. And if you go away with anything today, it's about the three C's in a grant application. And I'll reiterate these later on again. But a good grant application is clear, concise, and compelling. That's what a good grant application is. So you need to be mindful of that. <clears throat> so the Nature Based Tourism Co Investment Fund, they want you to look at the guiding principles, they want you to look at the case studies, they want you to look at the FAQs, the support service, and the workshops. All of these are value adds and resources for you. So the webinars that have taken place, the webinars that are forthcoming, make sure you get online and participate in them in some way, shape, or form. If you can't do it live, make sure you get the recordings and go back through them. The support software service that's offered there by the department and even ticks out what we're doing today. Make sure you're up to speed with the FAQs as they're published, basically. Very, very important to frequently ask questions and how government are responding to those from applicants. The case studies that they've provided already online to show indicatively from inside and outside SA what they expect or what they would like to see and the guiding principles. Make sure you're across that. Again, a little abbreviated shortlist for you to go through and tick the box that you've done all of those things. Who's eligible to apply? Well, private sector business, business cluster, local government body, Aboriginal corporation or incorporated association, and you must be financially viable, register for GST and have an ABN. So again, tick the box, make sure you are up to speed with all of those things, and you can legitimize yourself with the application that you do fit into that category, and you meet the mandatory in terms of financially viable, register for GST and have an ABN. So it's quite wide and varied, basically, where the activity can take place. And I've just tried, again, try to synopsize it here in this slide, basically. And there's a huge scope here. And you really need to look at the variance across the board and where you can fit into your project and where your project can fit into geographically and demographically within SA. So it's quite wide and varied. But be particular to your own service capability, your own experience of delivering into these areas geographically of what you've done in the past to the great value that you've provided, basically, not only for the tourism economy, but obviously for the wider economy and for government of SA overall and whatever relevant government department you've worked with. But again, quantify and qualify everything you're doing. Writing a grant is about making a statement and backing it up. 
And certainly as a grants assessor, I love tangible stats and facts and data, which means you need to reference government reports. You need to work with TICSA and SATIC and look at other agencies that can support your application and what's happening out there. What is the narrative around tourism in SA and how you're incorporating that in your application? And more importantly, how you align to that as a tourism entity at the end of the day. What government is advocating is what you're reciprocating. So you really need to think about, well, I have experience in these areas. I'm going into these areas. And certainly if you want to branch out and be a newbie per se and go into these areas as a first time, you're really going to have to validate your application as to why you're going into this area now. It's not just because of the funding, but you have a project plan or a business plan to actually expand your business into this area all along anyway. So there's a number of things I want you to think about even before you sit down and write the grant application about where you are and where you need to be in terms of the grant application. And grant applications are about templates. All right, It's all about having a project plan template, a risk management template, a marketing template, all done in advance. And one of the first templates, which I'll talk about again later on, but it's good to know that you, the first thing you should do really is answer the five W's equals how. So when you're contemplating applying for this grant, you need to delineate who am I? What do I do? Where do I do it? When do I do it? Why do I do it? And how much do I want for it? So who, what, where, when, why equals how. Now that's a good business operative to do anyway for any endeavor you do as a business, but certainly for grants. Because in some way, shape or form, I'm asking those questions on a grant application. Who, what, where, when, why equals how much do you want? So be mindful of that as your first template. But these are the areas of operation. So value for money, all right, very, very important, basically, 20%, I wanted to focus on that VFM, which is pertinent for all levels of government, basically. So 20% is a large cohort to the evaluation process here, right? And again, what I've highlighted here in terms of bolding is really what I want you to exacerbate in your actual applications, but I'll get it across to them, the evidence of the need of the funding, that the project will not proceed without the grant or would not proceed the same standard in the proposed timeframe, evidence again. So I'm looking for case studies. I'm looking for case studies or show me equivocally evidence of how it will be funded and how it meets funding guidelines. Is the proposal price relative to comparable projects? How does the proposal share the costs and risks between the applicant and SA government? And what are the benefits of the proposal to the South Australians? Okay. In-kind contribution is not counted towards co-contribution in this project, as I said. All right. So very much you have to have the financial resources to put an application in here. You still quantify in kind, but it won't be considered basically as part of the value for money brief, basically. So what I've highlighted here or bolded here is really what you ardently need to stick to. And you need to do this and really plan out how am I going to provide evidence on need and how it will be funded. Is it price relative to comparable projects? Have you done a competitor analysis? Have you done a SWOT analysis? Because as a business, what's your strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats to determine the price? And the advantage to the funding body to actually investing into there's a misconception about funding that we're trying to block you from getting the funding any funding body or agency it's not the case in fact we're trying to get most applicants across the line so you need to be mindful of that you need to be mindful that i'm there to help you <clears throat> but quintessentially still it's about answering the question and provide value because investment the grant is an investment not a gift it's not a handout so again, at the end of the day, it's about ROI and KPIs, return on investment, key performance indicators. You've got to show me measurables. You've got to show me benchmarks. You've got to show me that you are the right organization and you're selling yourself because a grant application is a sales pitch. Okay. And do you know how to sell yourself as a business to get that grant? Which is a quintessential question you're going to have to answer. Okay. Project management. All right. This is where we see a big letdown a lot of the time with funding, unfortunately, across Australia. It's, it's very good in theoretical, it's not good in practical. And I'm looking for you know, documents that actually back up, evidence-based again, that you have a business plan, a project plan, and a budget to go along with your mindset of what you're trying to achieve basically at the end of the time. Because I'm looking for on-time, non-budget return to the required standards. And applicants should include confirmation that the required development, environmental, and any other regulatory approvals are in place. In other words, if it's an infrastructure project, the DA is not only pending, it's approved. OK, because that's going to hold up the process, obviously, of delivery. So you need to look at dotting the I's and crossing the T's. Government at, at state and federal level like to call it TQM, Total Quality Management. It's basically like having an ISO 9001 benchmark for your organization at the end of the day. So again, total quality management, best practices that everything you do, you plan in advance. 
and you plan for what's going to happen in the future, basically. Details of how goods and services will be procured, details of how they will ensure that the project is delivered on time and on budget and required standard. In other words, who will manage the project and what government's arrangements are in place. Governance is huge. Best practice, probity, transparency, all the insurances are up to speed, your licensing, your tickets, everything. Okay, again, something you need to be mindful of because all too often, unfortunately, with grant applications, I see last minute grant applications. Now, you have a lot of time to put an application in here. <clears throat> Optimally, it's until the date provided or until the funding runs out. So sooner rather than later would be advisable, obviously, in terms of your application, but that does not mean a rush job. It doesn't mean a 4.55 application list due at 5 p.m. Because at the end of the day, you know, what you're going to put into it is what you're going to get out of it at the end of the day. So again, have a very much time management, project management, which people forget about in a grant application. Do your draft, draft one, move on to draft two, draft three, et cetera, basically. Something of this nature is not going to be written first time round of the size and nature you're asking for funding. So you're going to have several drafts of this grant application. Internally, who's going to help you? Well, you're going to work closely with your bookkeeper and accountant to do the financials, basically. Obviously, yourself and the project manager, the program manager is going to be delivering on this funding is integral to that as well. And you may need to bring an outside professional in, basically a copywriter or a grants writer, just something you may need to contemplate as well. OK, so again, you need to think about this as a process, not just as an application, because, again, I want you to be playing the medium to long term game here. This is not the only tourism grant application you're ever going to apply for. So I want you to learn from this and learn what's expected and wanted from government, and rightly so, and what you should be having as a grant process in your business, because there are other tourism grants that you should be applying for, being in the sector that you're in. Okay, And that's across both local, state, and federal government, obviously. Providing evidence, so you want to identify project risks. So for me, I'd always have a risk management plan. Certainly as a business, I have a risk management plan, how to mitigate and mediate any perceivable risks that I would incur as a business. So you need to identify project risk that you would envisage. Now, grants are given for solutions, not problems, which means I don't mind you identifying the problems, but I'm very impressed that you identify solutions, how you combat the problems, because then I can give the money for the solutions. People, unfortunately, focus on a grant application where it's all about problems. I have to give you, you have to give me the money because there's a problem, problem, problem. And we know there's problems there because of COVID-19 and what's happening with the economy and the visitor economy and the restrictions that are there. And I appreciate that. But at the same time, I give money for solutions, not problems, which means you need to highlight the problem to maybe 20 or 30 percent value. But I'm more interested in solution because that's the investment opportunity. You need to think about your grant application like that. So with project risk, applicants must provide details on the key risks of their project and how you're going to mitigate them or mediate them and the management strategies in place for the life of the project to actually mitigate or mediate them and provide at least three risks. You need to envisage there are three risks basically to this project and again how you're going to mitigate them and mediate them. Articulate organizations do that. Maintaining project benefits. Applicants should outline an operational needs of the project into the future, a strategy, what I've been talking about all the time, a strategy or a template to manage the project and how they will maintain the ongoing viability of the completed project. Beyond the lifespan of the funding, beyond the duration of the grant, how you're gonna absorb those costs, those running costs, those overheads, how you're gonna keep it going because last thing you wanna do, either for you or government, is capitulate after the end of the funding. So you need to think about two things really with grants, always, not just applicable for this grant, but all grants, innovation and sustainability how you're innovative in terms of what you're bringing to market, hasn't been necessarily seen before in these areas or even in SA, and you're sustainable beyond the lifespan of the grants funding round. And you're sustainable as an organization, you're gonna be here in three years and five years moving forward as an industry leader within tourism. So you need to be thinking about that because again, you need to be selling that, as I said earlier on, it's a sales pitch, you need to be selling that ardently, all right, in your actual application. So have a business plan. And if you have a business plan, look at it now and seize it up to speed. Seize it where you need to be in terms of your application, basically, because your business plan certainly needs rejuvenation from what it was pre-COVID-19 to what it is now and how practical and applicable it is in the current circumstances, not only for now, but in the next six months, the next 18 months. So the expectation is when you write a grant, you're extrapolating from your business plan and your project plan. Now, it's, not, it's utilized, not plagiarized, right? So it's not copy and paste. All right, let's clearly distinguish that. You're utilizing the content already in your business plan because you've already mindset of what you want to achieve as a business 
and you're always looking for funding for that at the end of the day. So there's an idea, ideology from a funding body that you've already contemplated through your own SWOT analysis or business development or strategic planning, what you need to do for your business, which means it's in your business plan. Then you'll be extrapolating from your business plan to show indicative that you need funding. So make sure your business plan is up to speed before you do this application. Make sure your project plan is up to speed before you do this application. The project's particular for what you're seeking funding for. Now, for me, a project plan, um, you know, it's, it's basically a 1,000 a word overview basically of what you're doing a more elaborate version shall we say of that original template the who what when where why with a project title that's 10 to 20 words basically a you know a project description and a project outline so optimally two to four pages nothing more with a budget and that's it and, and, it, and you need to stick to that template and make it practical for you okay capital expenditure your budget and this is where it's obviously going to be won or lost per se a lot of the time where you're competitive or perceived to be competitive in terms of your pricing obviously you've up to 50 percent here that you have to put in as a contribution for yourself as well you got to, it's got to be seen as a sound investment a viable investment a good commercial investment and really good return on investment so you got to be thinking not only in terms of numerics and the figures you got to be thinking about how i'm looking at this in terms of the investment against those categories because value from money is distinguished in many different ways um, I've just given through a number of ways that it's been distinguished already by the department and what they're looking for, basically, in terms of value for money. Your biggest issue in terms of writing the grant is time and capacity. Time to write the grant and capacity to deliver the grant. This has been the age-old bugbear of everyone, basically, from both sides of the funding narrative, from the funding body and from the recipient of the funding. Be very mindful of what you're saying you can do and how you're going to do it unless you have those you know, services in place to do that. So time and capacity is the biggest issue because, as I said, too many people are doing last-minute grant applications. They're not really distinguishing themselves to great value because they're leaving gaping holes in their argument in their grant application, you know, at the end of the day. So it's unfortunately that, you know, people make blatant errors in their grant application. Remember, writing a grant is a test of your common sense. It's a common sense application. People think it's a test of Dickensian or Shakespearean language skills. It's not, okay? It's very much basically make a statement, back it up with fact. And that's what I want you to get across in your business writing, in your business case, and putting together your grant application at the end of the day. Okay? It's a very matter of fact document. It needs to be practical, it needs to be living, it needs to be purposeful. So, as I said, to reiterate again, clear, concise, compelling, or short, succinct, and to the point, that's a good grant application. That's what I want to see at the end of the day. Okay? Which means drafting, editing, proofreading before you put in your grant application understand what's expected of you at the end of the day because as much as we talk about the three c's i'll talk about the three r's which are <clears throat> research relationship and reporting okay and they're integral basically as we move forward as well okay so research you need to look at you know what government have invested to in the past in terms of tourism in sa what they're stipulating in terms of what they want to achieve with this grant which i've obviously synopsized and there's a lot more content there online you can go through. You need to research the funding body, what the identifiables are for this funding round, what are the achievables, research who your competitors are out there. Is there going to be an opportunity for a consortium approach? Is there going to be an opportunity rather than being a silo, you're going to look at partnering with other entities in these geographical areas of operations for the funding? Research. Followed by relationship. Understanding that profile is everything for you as an organization. So not only having a relationship with the relevant government entities, um, that you already have, and I'm not saying exacerbated, but obviously understanding how that relationship that they know you at the end of the day and what you're capable of well in advance of the grant funding round. And that relationship, that professional relationship is integral a lot of the time as well. And be mindful of not only this grant, but obviously your future grants that you're going to be applying for. So that's relationships across the board in terms of local, state and federal government, state and federal MPs, relevant agencies, TICSA, SATIC, Regional Development Australia, and the likes as well, working closely, inclusively, what government like to call capacity building. All right, so being part of the narrative, not distinguishing yourself as being out there and left of field. Relationship, professional relationship, both before the grant and after the grant, because you're going to be doing acquittal, auditing, reporting, and having a good professional relationship is going to help you with that at the end of the day as well. So be mindful of that. So we're back to time and capacity again. I'm asking you to do a lot of work here. Now you have the latitude of time to do that, which is great, but take a staged approach to this because it's not gonna work out. I'm giving you a lot of homework per se, 
I'm trying to get you in that successful category all the time. Be mindful of this. And then the last or is that reporting. And this has been a bugbear for a number of government agencies and private sector agencies in terms of philanthropic grants over the years that are chasing the reports, the evaluations. Never be in that place that they're constantly ringing you, emailing you, looking for the updates and reports. It is stipulated usually by government as to how the reporting is in place, the auditing and the acquittal. But be mindful that an astute organization would have an evaluation process for themselves anyway. And evaluation begins day one, not day end. So when you start your project, if you have been granted grant funding, you're evaluating from the first day and you're doing it on a regular basis, whether it be fortnightly, monthly, quarterly. You're not doing it at the end. Okay, so evaluation is a big thing because not only do you have to give it back, it's mandatory as part of the agreement, but you should be doing it inherently for your own business anyway to learn where you can do things better or how you can mitigate things that are potentially going wrong. So be mindful of that, having a good evaluation process. So I've just got a question there from Ali. Are there grants for engaging someone to write a grant? I wish there was, Ali. <laughs> Unfortunately, no one's doing grants ever for that, nor will they ever, basically. Um, good question, though. Us little fellas can't afford to pay someone up front with a grant, possibly not receiving the grant. Well, Ali, there's two, two ways you can get a grants consultant in. Uh, one does fee based on success, so you don't have to pay the upfront fee. Obviously, you can't take the money out of the grant to pay a grants writer for that. And optimally, usually the bandwidth at the moment in Australia is anything between 10 and 30%, depending on the size and nature of the grant. Other grants writers then charge an hourly rate. And they'll quantify the hours in advance, basically. They'll say it takes, it's going to take so many hours to review this grant or draft this grant. Some grants writers will write the whole thing for you. Other grants writers say, write the first draft, send it through to me, I'll edit, proofread it, etc. And then you're only paying an hourly rate. So I think there's still options for you there, Ali, in terms of being cost effective. Okay. <clears throat> Moving on. What's required from your applicant? Um, an abbreviated checklist again, print it out, laminated, stick it on the staff fridge. This is really what you need to be ticking the box on in terms of you as an organization overall. And again, I'm being mindful of this grant, but also the future grants, because I'm trying to put you in a place that you are grant ready for all the future grants, both business grants and tourism grants that will be forthcoming in the years ahead. So you need to be capacity building when you're in your own tourism sector, both geographically, demographically, in the sector overall within SA. Have sustainability of approach as a business that you're going to be here next year and the years ahead. You're creating a profile for your business. As I said, it's a sales pitch. It's a selling document. And certainly be mindful, obviously, that if you meet the eligibility criteria and you answer the question, I'm going to be doing a deep dive on you, which means potentially if you get shortlisted, I may Google you, which means looking at your website, looking at your social media and what you're saying and how you're perceived to be current, topical and relevant in the tourism sector in Australia, let alone South Australia. Planning your grant application, those templates I've just talked about, Proactive, not reactive, have a grants calendar, know what's coming up. This is your first grant, maybe for a lot of you. Understand that, learn from this process. Learn from what you need to do and apply that to other grants that are out there and forthcoming as well and know what you should be applying for tactile-wise as a business in the grant sphere of influence. The acquittal of the grant, the management reporting, and as I said, that you have a project plan, business plan, and CapEx done in advance. And your application must connect with me, communicate quite clearly what the ask is and how you're delivering on time and on budget. Okay. What funding bodies are looking for? Well, who are you? What do you want the money for? How does this link to your strategic plan and their strategic initiative, what they're trying to fund? How would it impact in your business sector? What's your blend of strategy and storytelling? Because we're seeing more and more business storytelling now being incorporated in business grants and, and tourism grants across Australia. In other words, the narrative of where we come from as a business, where are we as a business, where are we going as a business? That's integral as well in terms of writing a grant application as well. Your total project value and people give to people, not just the projects, which means relationship management, as I said. You know, it's easy to give to an identifiable opportunity that's out there. People know the brand, know what they've done, they've historical record, they've been around for 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, or even more. Think about that. Think about profile before you even do the grant application. They're not just buying an output, they're buying an outcome. Government like to benchmark their grant applications against inputs, outputs, outcomes. Inputs, what's been put into it. Outputs, what's going to come out of it. The tangible outcome for the sector overall. And basically, out, uh, outcomes, how it can benefit the sector overall. How it can propagate across the sector that we can learn from this tourism industry supplier and other tourism entities can learn across SA for, from this entity. 
evidence of demand again if you build it they will come per se you need to substantiate that a lot of the time which is where i'm asking you to do some prelim work now on qualitative and quantitative data to substantiate that if you want to apply for this grant you want to do something as a tourism endeavor you want to build something in SA, you want to put something in in these regions and these areas of operation with this grant that basically you have done your research to substantiate that it's not just you thinking it's a good idea it's the tourism community it's the tourism cohort and more importantly the end user the tourist from the local area or from interstate that basically thinks you know what we got to go to south australia for that that's fantastic that's an amazing experience that we have to have we need to go into that state and spend some money Rapplex is to stop talking about activities and projects and talk about impacts. Don't tell me how you're going to do it. Tell me what's going to happen. That's what I'm interested in. What are, what's the knock-on effect? What's the benefit All right, at the end of the day? That's what I'm looking for. Don't tell me you're going to do this, this, and this. I'm more interested in results. Okay, You're going to step me through that. I'm more interested in what's going to happen at the end of the day. Okay, Don't be matter-of-fact about bringing me through the process. You can definitely allude to that, but I want to see what the impact's going to be. What's going to happen? What's the investment opportunity? Okay. So your grants checklist, are there grants for us? Well, there is because we're just here to talk about one today. So that's the first one. And you need to think about that. And what you do here is translatable for other grants that you're moving forward. Are we eligible? Very important, obviously. Know what grants are available then from that at the end of the day. Making the submission, doing the drafting, the editing, the proofreading, doing the work, delivering on the grant, being a successful recipient and the reporting in the acquittal. A very synopsized checklist of what you need to do as a grants process now for your business overall, <clears throat> but this is what's needed. So again, think about this as a case study. Think about this grant as a great opportunity, not only to invest in your business, but obviously get runs on the board in terms of building your grants repertoire and building your grants protocol and procedures for other grants that you can and should be applying for at local, state, and federal government level that will support you and help you. So be mindful of that. Okay. What makes for a successful proposal? Well, a program or project that's within the scope of the funding area of giving, obviously, and sufficient documentation supported with facts. A, you're eligible. B, you answer the question. C, you back it up with documentation and evidence to show indicatively you get it, what government are trying to achieve. You're singing off the same hymn sheet. That there's a synchronicity of approach. You know, you're working with government on this and what they're trying to achieve for tourism in South Australia at the end of the day. Okay, very, very important. The issue for you, obviously, is to make that viable in a clear, concise, and compelling fashion, which means drafting, drafting, drafting. All right. Again, and using key words which are important, basically, and that, that means positive language, as government like to call it, basically. Government talk about positive language, you know, key phraseology, yeah? So that's about words like effective and efficient and innovative and sustainable and agile and robust, you know? Find a good adjective and stick with it, yeah? So it's basically understanding words have impact. So using key words to describe your project and your endeavor, basically. Now, thankfully, thanks to government, they're already telling us it's an open book exam. They're already giving us a lot of those words. Firstly, in the documentation that's been provided to substantiate the grant. In other words, the background, what I'm advocating you should be reading in terms of documentation provided. There's a lot of key words in there, which I alluded to earlier on. And number two, in the questions themselves in the grant application form, it's about answering those key words to the questions, those key words you need to reciprocate, not blatantly, but understand how to shape them back to them in a narrative that you show a qualified understanding of what government's trying to achieve is what you're trying to achieve. Why are projects declined? I could have spent the whole hour on this alone, to be honest with you. But I've tried to synopsize this on two slides, which is kind of hard. Um, but I've tried to do my best I can in terms of why we knocked them out of the ballpark in round one. And these are some of the blatant reasons why people haven't hit the mark. Hasn't been documented properly. Failed to grab the reader. You know, as a grant successor, I need to be excited by it. I really do. I do need the wow factor. I do need to have an interest point in going, this is really a great investment opportunity here. I need to invest into this. Client groups haven't been involved in planning and determining. You either haven't talked to government about the project, you haven't talked to other local entities about the project. Again, community capacity building. It's poorly written. It's hard to understand. I mean, if it looks sloppy as an application, it must be written by a sloppy organization. Is that an investment opportunity? No. Proposal objectives do not match the objectives of the funding source. What you're asking for money for is not basically what we're giving money for. Proposal budget's not within the range. You're asking for too much money. You haven't coordinated with other entities. You haven't built that relationship management piece with the relevant government entity. <clears throat> Funding source does not know your capabilities because, again, you haven't talked to me in advance or you haven't profiled that on your social media or on your website or through your business plan. 
Project activities are too ambitious in scope, didn't follow the guidelines, insufficient evidence the project can sustain itself beyond the life of the grant, and evaluation procedures inadequate. As I said, it's very hard. We're trying to still chase evaluations all the time, every time. It's not where you want to be. So be mindful of these, okay? And understand where you need to be in terms of that as well, all right? What's the most common mistake? I, I can't believe I'm still saying this in 2020, answering the question. That's the most common mistake. People interpret the question basically going, oh, that's what, no, that's not what I mean at all. <laughs> so seek clarification. Use the resources that are, this is where the FAQs come in helpful. If you, if you feel that you, there's going to be a misinterpretation on your behalf of the question, seek clarification from the funding body. Say, what does this question mean? Can you break it down for me? What are the identifiables in this question at the end of the day? It's answering the question. That's where people struggle the most all the time, every time, because they have certain interpretations of what the question is or what it means, <clears throat> and it's not that at all. And they go off on a tangent and they completely lose focus in terms of what they're writing. And they need to bring it back on point every time, basically. And unfortunately, people go off and they waste characters. And now, you know, certainly it's an online application, it's not about wasting words anymore, it's wasting characters, online characters. And people just give me the most long winded answers. You know, I, I love people who write grants, I'm assured of this, that in, you know, in nearly 10 years as a consultant, write the most long winded sentences known to man. All right. They try to get everything into the one sentence. And I'm like, don't need everything, including the fridge. All right. I just need clear, concise and compelling, which means 20 words or less should be the optimum length of your sentence, even less. And I'm looking for impact statements. So the, every time you answer a question, when you go Q1, Q2, Q3, I'm looking for the first 20 words of impact. You're getting mind share from the assessor that you've garnered their information very, very fast and you have delineated it back to them a qualified understanding of why you're applying and you've got a great investment opportunity. The first 20 words is usually where it's won or lost. It's like a press release. You know, people read the most important bit at the top and then forget about the rest of it. But you've got to understand that I'm doing a skim read in the first instance as a grant successor a lot of the time. So I'm doing a read through, I'm looking for key words, I'm looking for key stats. Then I'll go back and do a qualified and quantified read. And understand that as well. I mean, let's talk from a federal government point of view. Now, federal government uses a software package, which is like a HR recruitment package, which does a keyword search. So human eyes don't even look at the first round of grant applications anymore. And unless your keywords are embedded in that first round application, gone. So you need to be mindful about how you're actually putting together your business narrative and how you're structuring what you're saying is a valuable investment opportunity. Okay. Okay, moving on. Statement of need exercise, this is a great precursor. So anyone who's written a tender before, <clears throat> this is like a go, no, go document in tender writing. And this is like a 15 to 30 minute exercise. Google statement of need. You'll find a template for it on the web. Find one that you can adapt for yourself as a business organization. And optimally, you're going to ask yourself 10 questions. Those 10 questions would be a hybrid of questions you're asked on a grant application, particularly the one you're applying for. And then questions of your organization. I've just given some indicative questions there. You would spend 15 to 30 minutes doing this with your partners, customers, staff, whoever you find pertinent. By the end, if you can quantifiably answer all those questions, you can green light an application. If you've missed an answer or you can't answer those questions, that's a red light. You shouldn't be applying for the grant. Why waste time and effort on a grant application that you're never going to get? You know inherently you're not going to get when you can do a 30 minute exercise instead to understand where you need to be and what is the expectation in terms of the grants funding body. Because it's not what you want to achieve, it's what the grants funding body wants to achieve and how you match that. That's what I'm testing you on. So you gotta be mindful of that. So this is why a statement of need exercise is a great precursor. And then the second slide there, of how to do it basically. And this is gonna save you a lot of time and heartache on a grant application, as I said, that you're not gonna get because it's lacking in detail, it's lacking in description, it's lacking in data. It's lacking in a business case. And at the end of the day, you need to think about formulating all that. So learn, if anything, from this grant itself. Learn from this grant and how you can apply for all the future grants you're going to apply for. So again, government are all about measuring outcomes, which is, you know, sometimes I'm going to ask you for your goal statement. This can be part of the, the application process or the evaluation process. Your goal statements, your objective statements, activities and tasks are necessary to accomplish your objective, benefits or results of each objective that leads to measuring of outcomes and performance indicators of success. In some way, shape or form, I'm asking you those questions. I'm asking for evidence to be provided to those. 
So you've got to contemplate again how I'm incorporating those or even making them a standalone documents in certain case and points as well. So be mindful of this, all right? They're really testing you on how articulate you are as a business, that you have business processes, you have business evaluation, you have very good inclination of where the market's going and where you are perceivably a market leader in your sector. That's what I'm testing you on at the end of the day. Now, most ardent business, articulate businesses will be more than happy to answer those questions because they've already contemplated that and they know where they are in the sector, okay? Another question. Oh, thanks, Tanya. Appreciate it. Save the compliments to the end, folks. Still got more to go through. All right, moving on. Oops, so I'm looking for a return on investment, yeah? In some way, shape, or form, basically, I'm looking, and they've already outlined, basically, at the end of the day, the return on investment that I'm looking for, okay? What they want to see happening in the tourism sector in these areas. Make sure you align to those, okay? Very, very important in that regard. And again, key performance indicators, how you're optimizing what your ask is, what's your strategy, what's your performance as an organization, how you're evaluating what you're doing, how you define success. That's a question that's become very pertinent and relevant for a lot of grant applications now. How, you how do you define success in this sector? How do you define success as an organization? What's your objective as an organization? How do you measure everything that you do? Key questions that I'm expecting you have undertaken as part of your business process already as a business, okay? So be mindful of these things because I want you to be mindful not only for this grant, but future grants, basically. In some way, shape, or form, I'm looking, I'm basing questions around these, okay? And I'm basing, obviously, the optimum question, which is, what's your unique selling point, or what's your point of difference? And, you know, this is about sales, as I said. You know, don't think, it's in the, as I said, it's an investment, not a gift. So I'm really, you have to distinguish how you're better than anyone else in the market, or how you're comparable, at least, to everyone else in the market in terms of tourism and in South Australia, basically. But I want a unique selling point. I want to back you. I want to invest into you. And you've got to give me a really good rationale, rhyme and reason through a USP or a POD, point of difference, as to where you stand out from the crowd and how you are amongst the elite or amongst the best tourism providers, basically, in South Australia. Okay? So you've got to think about that. And again, I'm just expecting that you've done this as a business anyway, let alone doing this for the grant application. Okay, so grant writers should apply for grants that suit particular needs. In other words, best fit, you apply for the right grant. Sometimes the best decision you can make is not apply for the grant because it's not best fit or it's going to put an onerous obligation on you to deliver on that grant against the time frame and the funding available. Taking into account the time to deliver on the grant successful, okay, it's going to take eat up a lot of your time and the, is that valuable against service operations you're already undertaking, particularly in the current economic climate. Available grantors for the type and purpose, grantors' requirements, when the funds are needed, and the organization's policies. So a lot to be mindful of. It is a great funding opportunity, a grant, and I would advocate you, certainly because of the scale and nature of this grant and the time frame in it, it's a really great funding opportunity for your sector to apply for. But you've got to be prepared, and you've got to be understanding what you're doing at the front end and the back end of this application, basically, and what's expected of you as a business and an entity, on top of you, obviously, getting up every day and opening your business, doing your business, trying to get through this economic climate as it is. So there is an onerous obligation on you. But if you come through the other side, you're going to get a lot more than just a grant. You're going to get a lot of profile. You're going to get a lot of support from government. You're going to be standing out, basically, which is what you want to achieve for your business at the end of the day. So just weigh it up is all I'm asking you to do. How does your mission align with the funding body's core priorities, as I said? What they're trying to achieve is what you're trying to achieve. And you need to be mindful of all that, okay? Again, that you're working together not you and me, all right? It's the we, all right? We're in this together and what we want to achieve for tourism in South Australia. How do you collaborate with others? How do you play nicely in the sandpit with everyone else in the tourism sector? Okay, that's what I want to see. And in other words, I want to see that you have partnership arrangements with hoteliers, restaurateurs, tourism, transport providers, all those things. You circle the wagons, per se, in your own demographic and geographic and who you're working with. <clears throat> So the need for funding, talk about the commercial potential for investment into your organization. The VFM principles, it's the land of acronyms and grants. Government like to talk about VFM value for money, and rightly so. They have to do a great probity and transparency because it is taxpayers' money. So VFM, make sure you're ardent about that as well, that you are talking about VFM in your application, how you're aligning to that as well. The market opportunity to invest into you where you're based 
demographically or geographically in SA that you know there's really a sustained investment opportunity here for tourism funding into this area that's much needed wherever you're based in SA. Your management capability, I mean now I'm asking certain grants for you know bios of the caliber of management staff both their professional and their industry experience. It's only one paragraph but I'm looking for the caliber of people that are going to be project managers per se in running this organization and running this grant and the local, state, or national benefits to investing into your organization, into your tourism endeavor, and what you're trying to achieve for tourism in South Australia. Just be mindful of these in the background at the end of this. Sorry, someone got a question? No? Okay. So, know the program rules, plan your application, be creative but honest. Don't say you can do it in 12 months when it's going to take you 18 months to do it. Research successful grants. What other really other tourism entities have done really well with tourism funding in SA? What have they got? What have they done with tourism grant funding? Give you an inclination for yourself of where you need to be as a business or an industry within that sector. Provide the information required, no more, no less. As I said, just answer the question. All right. It's not about these long-winded response. I get a lot of waffle, wordology, blue sky statements. Don't need any of that. Okay. I just keep on point all the time, every time. Answer the question you're asked, not what you think you're asked, as I said, and no superfluous information. It has to be relatable to the grant itself. That's it. You know, if I want more information, understand that a funding body will come back and ask for it. They'll ask for supplementary, particularly if you've been shortlisted. So you don't have to squeeze everything in, per se. Just give you enough that you garner mindset and answer the question you're asked. Social media and grants. As I said, I'm not advocating you have to use all of these. Just use the ones that are apt for your business. Because in some way, shape, or form, if you get shortlisted, I'm going to look at you. I'm going to Google you. I'm going to find out what you're saying and how relevant, purposeful you are for the tourism sector in South Australia. And you've got to have a consistent narrative. This is back to business storytelling, which I teach with my clients all the time about where they are, where they need to be, and where they come from, and how they're a valuable investment through their business storytelling. So again, think about that business storytelling narrative because it'll actually help your grant application. If you just leave the grant application to its own, it just becomes application number 000353 per se. It's not enough to sustain it. You need to look at what you're doing around it, the circum, you know, circumventing it really, and what you're doing really with before and the after. The after is the evaluation, the acquittal, you're ticking the box. The before is the marketing narrative that you're an industry market leader, okay? So telling a story, painting a picture with words, that's what you're doing a grant application. Don't do last minute grant applications, please, I beg you, just on behalf of anyone who's assessing this grant application, that appreciate you optimally get it in ahead of time, if not on time, but don't try and do last minute ones. Be proactive rather than reactive. Have a grants process, a policy or procedure in your business from now on, on how you're gonna tackle and manage grant opportunities and grant applications. People can only help you if they know you exist. Profile, profile, profile. Back to the previous slide of what I was saying. And cultivate that relationship with the funding body well in advance of a grant funding round. As I said, your first template. Who are you? What do you do? Where do you do it? When do you do it? Why do you do it? Which is now integral more than ever before. And how much do you want from it? Why are you in the tourism industry? Why do you do what you do? You can't, you know, I'm in it for the money. Well, we all know you're in it for the money, but at the same time, it's that you want to do something for the growth of the sector, the growth of the industry, the growth of local development. You employ local people. You create jobs. You basically create something for the local economy at the end of the day that people back and sustain. And you're a sustainable business. And that's what I want to hear at the end of the day. You are that business. You are that industry. Okay? So talk about an investment rather than a gift. Avoid dwelling on problems, focus on opportunities, as I said, and find a realistic assessment of the urgency. I know you needed the money yesterday, particularly in the current climate, but obviously this could take a couple of weeks before we actually dispense the funding. Don't do anything that's null and void, in other words, retrospective. Don't start the project until you get the funding or sign the funding contract. So be wary of that, obviously, as you move forward at the end of the day. Okay. Now, this is one of those project plans that I talk about. I use about four or five myself, and I advocate four or five of my clients when I work with them on grants. And this is one that I want to share with you, basically, which is a project title less than 10 words. But even in my summary, I'm very much adhering to the word count that it's going to be prescribed to me in the grant application. So I'm limiting my summary even to 100 words. And in that 100 words, I'm delineating the purpose, the scope, the people, the financials, the timescales, the risk and implementation of my project that I'm seeking funding for. Because then my full project description is 1,000 words. And in 1,000 words, I must delineate the aim, the description, why it came about as part of a larger project, 
what the funding will be used for, the timeline activities, who will be involved in developing, delivering the project, and the strategic value of the project. So shape this. Do this for yourself as an internal document <clears throat> before you do the external document of the grant application when building your project that you're seeking funding for. Okay, if you've got a template already, fantastic. Kudos to you. Well done. All right, keep using that. But I just wanted to share that one with you, basically. So again, think about project title, project summary, and full project scope, all right, and scope of works. Now, the seven principles or the seven commandments, as someone once said to me, basically, in grants, this is from federal government, but I think it's very, very good. These are the seven principles of Commonwealth Government Grants Administration. And I think this is applicable for any grant that you apply for across Australia, no matter what sector you're in. If you stick to these seven, it'll be received uh, and received very well by local, state, or federal government in terms of an application, that you tick the box on robust planning and design. And you can see how much in Canberra they love the words effective and efficient that I've underlined them. Outcomes orientation, proportionality, collaboration and partnership, governance and accountability, probity and transparency and achieving value with public money. Back to VFM again, value for money. If you go through these seven, you're going to do quite well in a grant application and you delineate these seven in a grant application and you show you match and align to this mindset government are going to like you for it and look it's best practice i think it's fantastic i think it's really good that government have distinguished that because certainly as a business even that's what i'd like to align myself for and that's what i am aligning myself for as a consultancy business basically to these mantras and these principles and what i'm trying to do for my clients and my customers so i think it's really really good and it's applicable and pertinent and relevant so think about these seven and how you're incorporating these in your grants narrative at the end of the day okay very very important in that regard so my top 10 make it about your reader your prospective client answer the question try not to waffle make it clear for what's in it for them return investment or key performance indicators be direct in answering the question don't talk around the subject talk at the subject avoid sweeping statements give great examples many case studies 60 words or less Remember, looks and kill, as I said, if it looks sloppy, it must be written by a sloppy organization, not a really great investment opportunity. Jog their memory if you've worked with them in the past or been in receipt of funding from them in the past. Reiterate that. Do the on-sell, per se. And make a word perfect. No journalistic adage. Count your words and make your words count. And that's me. I'm also on LinkedIn as well if you want to follow me, but feel free to contact me if you have any questions, queries. But feel free now. I'm going to open it up for questions. So if you have any questions, comments now, I'm happy to take them. Feel free to do so. I see people are already in the chat room, which is fantastic. Thank you. So um, Ian. That was um, um, Sean Sorry. again. That was, that was very good. Um, I think um, we can take chat room questions, but let's also try um, on the audio. Um, so uh, we'll see how we go with audio. I've got a couple, um, if I could fire off first. Sure. First of all, um, the, obviously, you've had a good look at the grant program. The conservation dividend is a key element of this grant program, um, and you highlighted it in one of your slides. Obviously, that's an important um, a number of things that you talked about in terms of collaboration and all the rest of it. I'm just wondering if you have a, a take on the best way to work through the conservation dividend and, and what people should be looking at. I think they should have drawn conservation policy or ethos around it, to be honest, which is shown basically, and not just be whimsical in nature and just trying to subscribe to it for the sake of it as tokenistic. They need to substantiate that and ideally some work they've done in that space already, either as a standalone or partnership, but again, have a conservation policy that they are adhering to and they're going to implement in terms of the grant application. In other words, be again, be proactive, Sean, rather than reactive that this is part of their operations, that conserv conserv conservation is very integral and important to what they do as a tourism provider. Great, no, good one. Um, that's, that's really good, thanks Keith. The, the last one I've got um, is relationships. You talked, at a, uh, talked about it towards the end there um, and ways in which to profile yourself um, and to make people aware of who you are before the grant lobs on their table for assessment. Um, can you give some, you know, is it worthwhile picking up the phone, sending emails? How far do you go with that between trying to build a relationship and potentially harass someone? Yeah, it can become borderline stalking sometimes, unfortunately, Sean. Um, and that's not where you want to be, obviously. I, I, I think you need to be mindful of months in advance, Sean, or at least weeks anyway. You know what I mean? These people, obviously, from the, the, the department level, 
are going to be very busy people in terms of this grant application in terms certainly they're going to get a deluge in the last week basically or even be in the next couple of months shall we say of applications so be mindful of even contacting them now and do that in a professional discretionary way but definitely send an email first follow it up with a phone call but the email is optimized against again three paragraphs saying who you are what you're doing why you're applying for this grant and if you have questions what's the point of clarification you need to ascertain and who do i need to talk to about that but even just distinguishing yourself well in advance of the next funding round sean that we may be too late in the day per se with this because obviously it's going to be a saturated nature again be mindful of playing the medium to long-term game here moving forward that with this department and other relevant government departments at state level and sa and across the board federally and even locally now is the time what i'm hearing these two words obviously in COVID 19 lockdown consolidation and pivoting now is the time as an organization or a business to sit down and think about who do i need to be talking to about what and when and that's where i'd sit down now as a business and think about right who can i collaborate with who can i work with and who can i work with at government level which means is sending off an email following up with a phone call and requesting a meeting if viable basically and are allowing for that either in an online or face-to-face -face presence and do that in a mannerly professional fashion brilliant there's a um there's one on the chat and then i invite people we'll see how we go to come off mic and uh, we've got a little bit of time um for some questions so maybe deal with the one on the chat room first keith yeah no worries ian's asked us a question if we partner on multiple different grant applications would this impact the chances of success is it best to stick with one grant submission partnership as an organization um no Ian, it won't mitigate it or immediate in any way shape or form it's just again the question i would ask obviously as a grant successor is are you all able to pull it off together and what value adds are you all adding basically so if you're going to partner with multiples ian basically what value add are they each providing to the project at the end of the day and then is it becoming manageable? Do you have a process that you can go through project management that you're going to tick the box for all of those entities at the end of the day? Ideally, you'd optimize it and you maybe have one or two industry partners. Any more than that, it could become really hard to delineate that and see the viability in it. So be mindful of that. Um, yeah. Tanya has asked, how would you advise first time grant writers to engage and consult authentically with indigenous first nation people linking to Aboriginal employment? Yeah, look, obviously, Tanya, there's a number of Indigenous support agencies out there. I'd be working with them, certainly the land councils as well, and other respective agencies, as I said, pertinent to the area of operations that you're in. They would be the natural conduit in the first instance, I would say, to work with uh, Aboriginality and Indigenous First Nations people. Um, so that's what I'd use, basically, working with those, uh, those organisations. Or even there'll be, potentially, there could be an Indigenous First Nations uh, representative in local government that you may need to talk about that's in your own, your own service area or within state government as well so make sure you make find that point of contact and who that is as well um, are there work around sorry are there workarounds if you don't meet all the criteria such as crown land versus private land owner I'm not going to speculate on that I think you need to seek that clarification and certainly look at the FAQ and maybe ask that as a pertinent question I think it'd be an interesting answer you would get and are there business case or project plan templates? Yeah, Natasha, again, just Google them, there's a plethora out there. I provide ones for my client, there's a number of other entities that do it. Great free ones on business.gov.au, which is the federal government department. Really great resource there for grant templates, business plan templates, project plan templates, all free and all downloadable, basically. Okay, um, I think that's all I can see so far. Yeah. yeah, so um, let's uh, see how we go. If uh, people want to come off mic and ask a question, please um, say your name and then your question. Anyone, any questions want to pick my brain? Otherwise, I can do some River Nance Norris jokes, Sean, but you know, I am what it used to be. I'll just promise you that in advance, you know. <laughs> Anyone, any questions? Well, uh, more a statement. That was excellent. Thank you. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Thanks for your feedback. Thanks, Megan. So um, I think that's um, it's been an excellent session, Keith. And I think the reason why there's no questions is because it has been an excellent session, and you've um, covered off a lot of information for people. And obviously, there's a huge amount to absorb. I think um, uh, the fact that we've recorded this session and people can go back and watch it and look at the slides and try and digest the, the information you put forward 
will be a process that people will work through as they, they, um, they move through this grant process. So um, again, Keith's um, contact details are there. Thank you for providing those. Um, as there are no more questions, um, I'll wind up today's session. Thank you again all for attending. Uh, we'll send an email out with a link to the recording so that everyone can have a look at it. Thank you again, Keith, for um, that brilliant presentation. And please go ahead and have a good day and we'll see you all next um, at our webinar. Stay safe, folks. Thank you very much. Get that grant. Good luck with your application.